I woke up in the middle of the night. Hi guys, this is Melanie here from Vintage Makeovers with Melanie, and today I'm gonna to do a different kind of project. So what we're gonna do here is a beginner's restoration of a doll. He is made by Aaron B. And he was made between 1935 and 1945. So this guy has seen a lot in his years. You can see that he's very cracked, his paint is coming off. His composition underneath seems to be in good shape, but the paint is definitely chipping off. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get off every ounce of this paint, okay? So I have a small mixture of things that I use to chip off the paint. I'm gonna use this razor blade. I'm also gonna use some dental tools that I have. You wanna use anything that you have that is small enough to get in there, get underneath there, pull that paint up, and um, not damage the wood composition that's under there. If you wanna learn more about how to do this process, I'm gonna link Dodie's dolls up in the corner here, okay? She has been essential to me learning and knows 100 million times more than I do. As you can see, this is a timely process, so hang in there, just keep chipping. If you get to a point where you can't find anything that'll pull, Go to a different area and keep going. As we chip, chip, chip away, we need to remember that this is most likely lead paint. So wearing a mask is probably a good idea. And safety glasses, those little pieces of paint fly everywhere. So don't want it in your eye. So the composition that these dolls are made of, this is a mixture of wood particles, sawdust, all kinds of other stuff, compressed and made into a mold. So with time, with weather, wood expands and shrinks. When that wood expands and shrinks, the paint on top of it would crack, and that's what caused all this cracking and crazing. I'm gonna put the link to a pretty cool video showing how um, these dolls were made. All right, it's been a few hours. We've been chip chipping away and we are getting down to the nitty gritty. Almost done. See, we have him completely stripped off. So all the paint, tiny bit around the neckline, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Have it all, all off now. In the chipping process, I lost a little chunk of head right here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use, all right, so what I have here is a gesso mixed up. This is Plaster of Paris, um, house paint, and Elmer's glue. I woke up in the shape of an eyeball and I'm gonna go ahead and put these in here so this is kind of tedious and it kind of drives me nuts but But you showed me how to believe Still gets me So it's really important that you get your little papers in those eyes and they're gonna stay in there for the duration of the project so we don't get any paint on his pretty tin eyes. So I am using a little sanding pad. That is 320 grit and then I also have some 400 grit. So we want to sand, sand, sand until it feels like glass. I mean, super, super smooth.
it is hard to share my thoughts. So we have been sanding, 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 making the baby super, super smooth. So it should just feel like, like glass, like as smooth as you can get it, okay? Without messing up your, your curls here. From me turning her head back and forth, back and forth, I'm ripping her body. So we're gonna go ahead and get this off. So if you look down under, she'll either be held on with a string or most of them are wire like this one. So I'm gonna take this wire here and we're just gonna take her head off so that I don't damage her body anymore and it's easier to paint that way anyways. So. and getting her paint off so get it on there stuff dries pretty fast so leave it so we are about to use an air gun I learned to use an air gun about a month ago maybe um, I bought one started using it with acrylic paints and um, I've been told the oil works a lot better, so I'm going for it. We are using um, this. This is house paint, the oil based, and I bought porcelain skin, that's what it's called. Um, I put some in this little cup here, and I mixed in some mineral spirits, purchased at Hobby Lobby, and it just seems really, really too white. Um, I, don't want, I don't want her to look like a ghost seems too too light so I'm gonna wing it here and I'm gonna add a tiny bit this is um, red okay and I bought the starter kit from Hobby Lobby of the colors um, so I'm just gonna put a dab in here and hope I get it right and if I don't then you know what I'll do it again it's okay mm -hmm. all right here we go so we're gonna start spraying her please don't judge my airbrush skills as I said I have no skills I'm winging it here guys Okay, so here is the image of her after the first coat of paint. You can see that I did not sand good enough. See all those little pores? All those little bumps? She felt like glass. Apparently, I did not do it good enough at all. So, a couple things have happened here. Um, I showed you the picture a second ago way like all these pores were showing up so that means I didn't sand good enough so I went back and tried to sand it again couldn't get into these small spaces hopefully we're gonna use that paint to fill it up and she's way too white so I'm gonna mix up some more paint all right so here we go we're mixing again I adding this time in my red and also some yellow orca is that how you say it Oh yeah, this skin tone is looking a little better. And let's give her another coat. So here we have it after coat number two. You can see on her cheeks where I sanded better, but still not good enough. Yeah. You remember the gesso that we used, the gesso, the gesso. Anyways, what I did was I took my finger and I just kept rubbing it into 
all of her little bumps. And you can see there's a lot of little pores there. So I rubbed, rubbed, rubbed. And then I went back and sand, sand, sanded again. So this is working really well though. Looking pretty good to fill in all those little tiny dimples. And that is what she looks like after I sanded her again. And then I sprayed her again. So finally, I think we're making some progress. Now we're doing some blushing. So what I did was I used that skin tone that I already had made up, add a little bit more red in there, and we're gonna give her a little bit of rosy cheeks a little bit around those temples, tiny bit on the forehead and under the chin. Now where I oversprayed, I went back with my regular skin tone and put some just more on her eyes. Now here we go with the hair. So for this, I mixed a little bit of that regular house paint or the, yeah, the oil paint that I had, some burnt umber and some burnt sienna. I really didn't plan on her being a redhead, but you know, that's the way it's turning out. It is hard to share my thoughts. Ooh, na, na. It's like cutting a wound in a bleeding heart. But I know that you need it all Ooh, na, na, na. Just give me some time Cause I need to know That you're staying Ooh. When I look back I can see All right, it's time for some eyebrows using the finest brush that I could find. I'm gonna give her a little bit of eyebrows. Ta-da, there they are. All right, let's paint those lips red. Okay, getting that on there. It's kind of tricky to do it when I'm holding it so you guys can see and not me. And now for some eyelashes, always an odd number. I woke up in the middle of the night. Ooh. And let's get her head back on. So screw that back, not screw it, wrap that back on there, tighten up your cord and um, tuck it, tuck it in. Well guys, here we have it. This is the finished product. I think he looks pretty cute. And that is that. So thank you guys for watching. You guys are awesome. This is Melanie from Vintage Makeovers with Melanie. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Waiting for a moment to stay